Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. I am super happy and pleased to welcome uh, Wendy Kraft, who we've known each other, I don't know, 15 years, something like that. Um, prolific, skilled, smart person in the family office space, and in uh, uh, addition to knowing a lot about business and finance, uh, a reformed lawyer, I think, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and so uh, just full disclosure, we've known each other for a long time. Super happy to be doing this. And what we're going to cover today is just some uh, uh, insights on what's going on with uh, Wendy and the family office she's associated with, as well as what's going on in the family office world uh, presently, sort of trends if there's we can talk a little bit about that. So welcome, Wendy. Thanks for being here. You're absolutely welcome. Good to see you, Arthur. Good to see you, too. Um, I know you've been spending a lot of time in Atlanta. Could you tell us how that all came about and what you're up to there? Sure. I um, I met a wonderful family, a Lazarian family, about a year ago, and we just started talking. Um, they were a first-generation family. So as I do with many people, I tried to steer them in the right direction with some things. Um, and they made me an offer last fall that I absolutely could not refuse, which I could have refused it, but they were so nice. And I think it's the dream of every family office executive to work in a family office where there's no drama, where you're heard, where you can use your talents and where you can really make a difference. And while I had that in New York for 20 years, I'll be honest, the commute was killing me <laughs> as I got older. Three hours a day round trip was tough. Um, and I've always believed that Atlanta had something unique in the United States. And what we have here is we have the music industry. So a lot of people are familiar that Tyler Perry Studios are down here. That's not to say that other cities don't have music, but they also have the movies here. So Walking Dead for many people, uh, the Marvel comic series and NBC Studios just put down 95% of their production at the end of the street I'm sitting on. It looks like LA. There's all the wow. studio lots. Yeah. Um, and we have old families and we have new families. So we have you know, Chick-fil-A is down here for people who don't know, Coca-Cola headquarters, Mercedes-Benz. And all of this is within one hour of everything. And so along with the world's busiest airport, there's an opportunity, I think, I could be wrong, I've been wrong before, but there's an opportunity, I think, to do what many of us in the family office field have often wanted to do, which was to take high net worth, not just from family office per se, but from the music industry, from the movie industry, and just say, oh, look, everybody's a high net worth. We're all going to run into some of the same problems. Let's work together. So that's my dream. We'll see. Yeah. But it's, it's you know, I think an opportunity to really collaborate and harness some of that energy from other sectors. We were just now starting in family office to bring in sports because we realize a lot of the athletes don't have access to the the type of information that the family offices do. So I think we need to include music and movies with that as well. Yeah, is there a, um, a specific role that you and the family office plays in helping those athletes and musicians uh, create structure, for example? Is that part of what you're trying to do? No, I'm yeah. just being me. I'm causing trouble. Good. Um, okay. I, I spend full time working for this family, but I'll be honest, people can laugh all they want. When I was watching the Johnny Depp trial and I realized he had $500 million yeah. and lost it, we started a conversation among family office executives like, who let him do that? How did that happen? Oh my gosh, what is going on? Um, because in family office structure, we have so many people that would say to the family, you can't do this, or we have to put it here so it's protected. And it made us really realize that other areas of wealth simply don't have that. It, 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 you know, You know that, but when it really kind of comes into your face, you're like, wow. We can't do that. And I do have friends in the movie industry. I've known producers for years. I have friends in the music industry. And when they started talking, it was like hearing the athletes all over again. We don't know about this. Nobody said anything about this. Um, why shouldn't we be doing this? And I thought, well, this is dumb. I have access to so many great people, including you, that I can turn to when I have a question. 
and they don't have it. So it's not a matter of structuring it for them. There are a lot of great um, support staff here. I'll say the accountants, the lawyers, uh, that kind of thing. But what they don't have is community. They haven't been invited in, as it were, to the community uh, no. so they can access the services they need. And I think that's a shame. And I'll be the troublemaker. And I just want to see that for Atlanta because it's a beautiful city, wonderful city. And it has so much to offer because of what it is that I would like to see everybody in that situation be able to find each other, talk to each other and say, oh, you know, I was thinking of buying a plane. Should I do that or should I invest in net jets? You know, what should I do? So I would like for them what we have. Yeah, it's um, probably readily apparent to many of the people that might be listening to this, that the resources are abundant and highly skilled. But I imagine that if you're not exposed to it, then you're talking to a small ecosystem of people that may not have been exposed to it, like you and I, for example. Um, and how many times have we looked under the hood in someone's situation, either as an engagement, but even more often just having a conversation like you often have, and you go, holy crap, you guys don't know that you can do this, like, and protect that asset and, you know, uh, structure things in a certain way, or just happen to know the right people to move things around a bit. So, you know, things e just become easier, for example, right? Yeah. And, and that's really what the community is about, helping, protecting to some extent, and just saying, oh, you know, I, I can't tell you how many times in a family office or I had to reach out to friends and just say, I don't know how to do this, or how do you do it? Or what would you do in this situation? And without them, I wouldn't be where I was today. And I just kind of want that for everybody, as silly as that may sound, because it hurts when you see really great talent make great wealth and then lose it for reasons they didn't need to lose it for. Yeah, they didn't need to. They could, they could just adjust things a little bit. In fact, you know, the you know this, but Family Office Insights was an accidental byproduct of me doing exactly that having sold a business, had some assets, didn't know what to do with them and leaned on people that knew what to do. And, and so I just asked my peers and others what, what to do and it saved me a lot of time and money and making a lot of mistakes. I made it plenty along the way, as you well know. Um, but you know, having the peer group to lean on rather than Google something, right? You know. Because they've lived through it. Yeah, they have. And it, it's just an incredible resource. So that's that's my Atlanta wish, is that everybody comes together as a community and has that peer group, which we had in New York. And I really want to see it here. There are small peer groups, but they don't cross sectors. And I hope that they do. Well, I, for one, can say out loud that I'll be missing our glasses of champagne in Grand Central Station while you wait for the train. Oh, well, you can come to Atlanta. You oh, can sure. Come to Atlanta. It's yeah, wonderful down here. That's easy. Yeah. So what do you see going on aside from, you know, the, well, let's do, let's contrast Atlanta with New York, for example, in the, what arguably is a robust New York, having a robust family office community. Uh, can you contrast what, you see in Atlanta now and and you know are you able to find people like you were like you did in New York and smart uh, skilled people that are really interested in in the 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 business side of and and the relationship building side of family offices they're they're here I've met some great people I think um what you get in other countries that are newer countries and in some states that are newer states is you get this overwhelming fear that you must keep everything private and you must keep a lot of things private, but there is the public ability to share part of the story without revealing sensitive information, which we kind of learned how to do in New York. And in New York, we, we found out that if you keep quiet and you never go out you're really hurting the family that you work for. Because if there's a bad actor that's preying on family offices, they are counting on the fact that you're not talking 
because that gives them a lot more targets. But if you're talking, oh, hey, you better be careful there. You know, we lost X amount of dollars or something worse. Um, so the more you talk, it's really a safety precaution. It's a resource building um, thing. And you just have to learn how to share non-sensitive information and, you know, where the line is. And I think when you're a newer community, you're not sure where that line is. What should I share? What should I not share? Um, how can I help? What should I stay away from? And it's just a learning curve. So we're going to see if we can make it a really quick one. Yeah, it really is super valuable because you wouldn't otherwise hear about nefarious activity on the one hand and really beneficial uh, services on the other, right? I mean, you just, that's right. If you're not, you know, poking around with your peers and, uh, you know, it's always nice to connect, you know, as you know, you know, COVID put an end to a lot of the in-person things and it's coming back, I think. But, you know, that personal connection, in-person stuff really makes a difference. Um, it does. And fortunately for us, right, we we had years and years of that. So it it carried us through the COVID times when we couldn't do that, right? Right. And yeah. everybody was still able to connect, which is just incredibly valuable. Yeah. How do you find the um, legal community down there as it relates to servicing the family office community? Well, I was very surprised to find that there's a very robust legal community handling families that live here. Uh, they do do things a little differently than what we saw in New York, but that's because there's different laws down here. We're also next to Tennessee, which is trying to probably one of the top five states for trusts. So you have that right next door. Um, and we're close to Tennessee. We're four hours from Nashville. So some of those families who feel isolated are coming here for events, as are our North Carolina friends. Um, when there's something happening in Atlanta, they're the first ones to drive down. Uh, it's not like the Northeast where it's like, oh, I don't know, the train, uh, you know, everybody yeah. just gets in a car and goes. Um, so I think the legal uh, field has been very responsive. I think there's a lot more room for growth as people come out. Um, and we're dealing with new topics today, right, that we never dealt with before. Um, we have the sunset, uh, um, many provisions in the tax laws. We have the CTA that's driving everybody insane. Um, down here, we have film credits. I didn't know anything about film credits when I came down here until, you know, families that I'm friends with down here said, oh, are you buying any for 2024? And I said, am I doing what? <laughs> buying film credits? We're not in film. Oh, you don't have to be in film. Um, so, you know, there's a learning curve for me, too. It's not just on the other side. So that's why you need the community so you can learn together. So what what else can you draw contrast wise? Are there um, robust CPA firms that help back office type things? You know, we, we, we benefited greatly from, you know, everybody comes to New York. So even if it wasn't there, we got exposed to it, right? All right. Uh, how are you finding it? Uh, in Atlanta, in that area? Well, I think there are some uh, firms that do very sophisticated planning. There are other firms that just restrict themselves to some asset protection. I don't see as many firms looking to go shelter trusts in the Cook Islands <laughs> that you did in New York, <laughs> right? Um, so there's more of an international flavor to New York, which is, you know, other than Wall Street, it's surprising to me because, again, this is very international. Um, I think people fly through here and don't always stay here, and they should, uh, because, again, there's so much opportunity for everybody down here on the, the service side, not just the families. Um, the families want to learn. They're desperate for the education. Um Antler Group is trying to create it. They're throwing events to create Atlanta as the new Southeast Silicon Valley because Georgia Tech is here. Right. So it's not just real estate or what you would think of, of Georgia. I mean, there's a robust tech community. There's an AI community. It's all here. It's just in its infancy compared to, you know, some of the larger cities that had the benefit of a stock exchange. What have you found, not just specific if you don't mind talking about to the South and your area there, 
going on with cyber security in family offices? Have you have you seen? Because there seems to be a lot of activity across all the industries and worry about the cyber attacks, just like you know Atlanta suffered from the the cyber attack, just like everybody else did um, uh, with the scheduling system or whatever it was. Have you heard a lot of uh, talk about you know, protecting family offices in that regard? We have. And one of the groups down here even brought somebody down to talk. It's kind of funny because they bring down a lot of people from New York to talk right. to about it. But um, you know, the families down here have been hit. There's been attacks. But they're that part they're very good about sharing about. Here's what happened to us. You should do X, Y, Z. So that's why I know this can happen because they're already doing it uh, in a little less open way than New York. Because if it happens in New York, we're on the phone like it's high school. Oh, do you hear what happened to us? Yeah. You got to do this, right? Yeah. It's very proactive. And down here, it's more, oh, since you brought it up, here's what happened to us. But I think that's a Southern way of doing things. Um, and I have to say, walking into a store and having somebody go, welcome in, you know, <laughs> that's wonderful. Nobody beeps their horn at me and tries to drive me off the road if I get to put on my blinker. I mean, there's a lot to be said for the graciousness of the South. Um, that makes me, you know, as soon as I was back in New York driving, I was like, oh, this is <laughs> terrible. And the traffic here is terrible, but people are much more polite about it. So yeah. I think, you know, it's a great place to be. I think that everybody here, families, regular people, service providers are incredibly invested in creating a dynamic powerhouse of family offices from all sectors across the Sun Belt. So like I said, this is really dragging people down from Charleston all the way to Nashville. It's that's the the stream. And I think those that get here early that want to be helpful to the industry will find great success. I, I just do. And I think there's just 20 providers to every family office in New York. And it's great because you will have access to so many things, but I think there's a lot of opportunity here. You know, it's uh, Mary and I went, did a Southern tour. We went to Nashville. We didn't make it to Atlanta, you know, Greensboro. We did a little bourbon trip you know, to the distilleries and so forth. And we we spent a few days in Nashville, which is just a booming. Um, it and, is. Uh, I was just having a, waiting to sit down for dinner at a, a, a bar in the restaurant and struck up a conversation with a random person. And they were formerly from New York. They knew a bunch of people that I knew. So, you know, people are, you know, it's moving south. There's no question about it. It is. And it is not, you know, I, I worked in New York for over 20 years and I will tell you, Georgia was not what I thought it would be. And yeah. I love it. I absolutely love it. I it, it just am grateful for all the new friends I have and people, people just going, yeah, I'll drive four hours. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know, and it's not a big deal. If there's something great happening, they're willing to do it. And they're just so gracious. They're willing to help. And it's just a matter of, you know, really providing the services, getting people down here that can teach things and teach services that they haven't seen. It's it's not, you know, that anybody's less intelligent than anybody else. We just haven't been exposed down here to some of the same things. <laughs> so I have a little bit of a cold. Yeah. Um, so I'm really encouraging everybody to go on the Atlanta family office events, LinkedIn, if you're going to do a webinar, if you can help in it, you know, just put it up there because people would like to see it. Yeah. So we'll make sure when we, when we post this, we share that. So you get more exposure with it. And of course we'll post stuff. Um, I didn't know about it until you just told me. So maybe it's because I'm not paying attention, but that happens. That's uh, okay. Yeah. So how about the, uh, I, I have to ask you because we, when we go places, we're always zeroed in on the food. How are you enjoying the food down there? <laughs> there are. It, yeah. I'm putting on weight, Arthur. They they have um enjoy yourself. Called, Don't worry about it. <laughs> it is it, you know, there it is where I am on Buford Highway is very Asian. It's the second largest Asian population outside of San Francisco. And there's four Michelin one-star restaurants just on this road. Nice. 
So yeah. I, I will tell you, that's great. And then where I have my apartment, they have this place called City Barbecue. And they sell the ribs by the bones. Like, how many bones do you want with hush <laughs> puppies and banana pudding? And, oh. So, I mean, there's as much food as I could find in New York, and in some cases, more types of food. But it's real close because everything's so much closer. Um, I don't have to take a train downtown. I just drive over there, drive over there. Um, it, it's been really good. So the Asi Asian selection here is better than anything I've ever had. Um, so they, the family took me to a few places. It's just like blown away. There's steakhouses that are wonderful. There's Southern, you know, food, what you would think of traditionally Southern food. That is just, it's really good. And, you know, Savannah's four hours away. So Savannah mm -hmm. is now the deepest port that they've dug out. They've put um, a one mile long Hyundai plant right outside the city for 50,000 workers. And they only I have 5,000 yeah, yeah, yeah. 5, units, apartment units going up for 50,000. So I'm going to guess there's going to be a lot of building there. And there's all kinds of industrial like Amazon storage facilities a little further away from it. Uh, because it's between Georgia and Florida. So it's just, things are just booming. It's amazing. Yeah. It, isn't it really interesting? And we know each other well. So, you know, New York City was, are you kidding? I'll never move out of New York City, right? For me anyway. And then all of a sudden the world changed. And um, you know, I'm reasonably well-traveled domestically and otherwise. But, you know, during the 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 covid nonsense you know we traveled all over the place wherever anybody would have us you know that you could and we discovered amazing restaurants amazing people amazing experiences um and so you know the, the country's full of just outstanding not only people but opportunity everywhere you know, it, it's, it, it really is and i've got to tell you that until COVID, I never thought I'd live in New York City either. But all of a sudden, breaking that commute, I was like, why am I doing this? This is crazy. And now I've got a 20 minute commute and it's fabulous. Yeah. And people down here think I'm crazy for driving, you know, 20 minutes. And I'm like, oh no, this is this is great. But I think, you know, a lot of people had impressions of this little Sunbelt area and didn't come. And it was the flyover state. I mean, I'll say it. It was New York and Miami. Those were like the big East Coast, sometimes DC, places for family office events. And then you had Chicago, San Francisco, LA, Houston, and Dallas. That was it. And those were where the big things were. Um, and I've really had a chance to kind of explore this, this whole area. And it's great. And people are, a lot of people are coming out of Florida here because of the insurance thing that's going on there. Yeah. Um, the homeowners and car insurance is just crazy. So a lot of people have moved up here better for hurricanes, quite frankly. Yeah. Uh, it's a little safer. So I, I just think this is going to be a real growth spurt um, over the next five, 10 years. Can you share with us, it's always uh, beneficial to hear from somebody that's on the ground as opposed to listen to the sound bites on whatever, you know, the, the nonsense mainstream media or anything else that feed you things that they want you to hear. Tell us about the homeless situation and the tenting and how bad is it there? Is it, it does it exist? Because you can't go to San Francisco right now. It's like it's, you know, uh, how, how is it? Well, I will say I am on the perimeter. So for people who know Atlanta, there's this perimeter around the city and I'm on the northern perimeter. Um, so I'm not in downtown. I haven't visited downtown yet, except going on the Marta train from the airport. Um, best deal ever. It's two bucks. It's yeah, great. right. Two bucks. <laughs> two bucks. Free parking, too. Um, so I'm more in that northern area. And you know, you will see some homelessness here in the Doraville area, but up where I live in Sandy Springs, I don't see any. Um, there seem to be a lot of religious groups and other groups that deal with that and have outreaches. So it's not like there, I haven't seen one tent city. So yeah. whether there are in other parts of Atlanta, maybe, but not here. Um, it's great. It's not like... 
I hate to say it, don't everybody get mad at me, but when I go into New York City, it's gotten a little bad. It kind of oh, no, it's got, it, on. It's got <laughs> sketchy for sure. It, it really yeah. did. And I had to go, you know, out of Grand Central every day and it, it was getting kind of sketchy. I don't feel that way here. I feel very safe and I can go everywhere and you know, it's lovely. Yeah. Nice move, Wendy. That thank you. you. Know, the universe delivers, right? Yes, yes, yeah. it delivers. It yeah. does. Well, let's. Uh, I'll make a commitment to socialize that link and get you know people aware of it, and we'll we'll post our stuff on there. And I'm really glad that you made time to do this today with us, and uh, we'll share the link. And um, uh, we're going to be putting it on Arthur's Roundtable, which is on Spotify, iTunes, and all that kind of stuff, and. It also sits on the Family Office Insights uh, YouTube channel. So we'll make sure you get the links for all that and you can share it about. And then uh, um, Mary and I will come down. We'll visit for sure. Come visit us. Yeah, yeah, we'll definitely do that. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Arthur. It's really good to see you. Good to see you too. Thanks, Wendy. As all right. Always. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.